Well, welcome to Watercolours with Caroline. We're going to paint a horse. There's two views of the horse. There's a running horse and there's a horse's face. And I have to tell you that I struggled a little bit with the horse's face. So I'm going to split this video into two parts. We'll do the running horse and a little bit of the horse's face in the first video. And then I'm going to record a second one where I complete the horse's face. We did this in a two hour Zoom class and I just didn't have enough time to get the the second horse finished. It needed a lot more care, it needed drying time, so forth. So anyway, join me now uh, to paint a lovely Pinto horse uh, and uh, get your paper ready. Have a good sized piece of paper. And I think we're on um, six by eight. I'm just looking at my paper to check. And uh, if you want the line drawings and the instructions, they'll be in my Etsy shop, uh, PDF download for sale if you need those and get your paper ready, get your paints ready. And you know what we're gonna do, we're gonna paint. The thing to remember is I have never painted a horse before. I've never drawn a horse before. So this was a bit of a challenge for me too. But really, if you've traced the drawing, it's just like painting anything else. It's just like painting a tree or a piece of wood. You have to kind of forget that it's a complicated horse and just think about where are we putting the colors and the lights and the shadows because it's really just like painting everything else um, and we're only using three or four colors again we're not using a whole range of colors the biggest thing to remember is the background is not like anything we've done yet this series it's extremely light very loose we're not we don't need to go up to the tape edge we're putting it on dry and moving it out with a wet brush and we're doing it in layers. So the colors you see there are not um, put on in one go. They're put on in bits. And it doesn't matter if they look kind of um, hard edged or bitty because once you get three or four layers of these colors, they just kind of look like a marble top, you know, where you get a whole bunch of colors over the top of each other. So go very, very light and watery we're not going to mask any of the white out. We're going to try making that white tail if you're doing the running horse just by painting your light wash of shadows up into the, the tail and then adding a little bit of water to soften it off. So that, that's one of the main things in this lesson is working on putting in this very soft, loose, background in layers and um, working it in on dry paper with a wet brush not too wet and even a dry brush to get that kind of soft look so that's that's the main lesson the rest is just putting paint on and doing shadows so don't think of it as a horse think of it as a big block of wood that you're just just doing shadows on so let's and I I'm going to show you both but I would suggest if you want to be successful, I don't know which one you've drawn, of course, but this one is easier, even though it's, you know, it's a running horse. It is easier. This is the, this is the reference photo by Denise McQuillan of the running horse. And this is uh, the head. She had some beautiful, beautiful photos of this Pinto on her Facebook photos, but I chose ones that were, um, less body to paint this is you know less detail and i just loved the movement in this one so we're, we're not going to do all of this background we're making making it up so we're going to start with the background and we're going to have cerulean blue because that's the complement of most of these sort of golden colors and we're also going to mix a gray and I prefer the cerulean blue mixed with burnt sienna. I think that makes a beautiful soft gray. You can use a little bit of Payne's gray if you want. We have to be careful with Payne's gray. It can get a bit too gray and a bit too dark. Or if you don't have cerulean blue, you could use cobalt blue and you can mix it with burnt sienna or raw sienna. Any of the grays that we've ever mixed, the permanent rose, I think right here, there's a little warm gray under this tail. And I think I maybe mixed a little bit of permanent rose in my gray to make a slightly warmer gray there and up here too. So there's a lot of subtle changes to the gray. So let's um, mix up that, the colors that we need for the gray. I'll bring this over here. 
get my bigger we need a fairly big brush we don't want to be fiddly with this and I'm going to get my cerulean blue I'll be using quite a bit of this for shadows and add some water we don't want it too dark and then I'm going to have some cerulean blue with some burnt sienna Just to, you can see how quickly it grays it down. You have to be a little bit careful it doesn't make green. But that's a, that's a really lovely gray. It doesn't matter if it has a little greeny tinge. And I will, I'm going to make the third gray that I love, my favorite gray, which is the cobalt blue. I want to just have some ready if I need to warm up my grays. The cobalt blue, the raw sienna and a little bit of rose to warm it up because I really really love that gray a little bit more cobalt I'm just bluing it a little bit more blue a little bit more rose a bit more water just trying to get it just just how I want it and back and forth a little bit, I know, and a little sort of a, a pinky gray. So I've got a few grays there. I will also put some raw sienna out. Ready, get some raw sienna ready. Now, let's bring the running horse back. And I'm going to start just right here. And on dry paper, biggish brush. This is a number 10 brush. I'll zoom in a little bit. Bring my tray over so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to take my cerulean blue. Actually, I was going to have my tray there so you can see what I'm doing, but I need somewhere to rest my elbows. So I have to move it for a minute. And because this is dry paper, I can come very carefully along the side of the horse's head. This is pretty watery. And now I've just got that much paint on. I could use a, a different brush if I wanted. I to keep the blue on that brush. I may use my bigger brush with just water on it. Just water on my bigger brush. And I'm just going to take, that's a bit right, a bit big actually. I'm going to take it out. Going back to the other brush, that's too big. My number 10 brush. I'm just going to take that out with a wet brush. And just don't take it to the tape, just fade it out. And I'm going to get a little bit of that purpley gray that I made. I'm just going to drop that into that water that I just, just put out there. Slowly, slowly does it. Wet brush, dab the water off, just ease that out. And to get a, a soft edge, you kind of wiggle your brush as you come out. Just wiggle it so that you don't get, what you don't want is brush strokes on the edge. So slowly, slowly, it's dry paper. You can work really slowly on dry paper. Now I'm going to get the one that I mixed with the, the cerulean and a little bit of the burnt sienna. And I want to, I'm going to push that up into the horse's tail to get that edge. And again, just do a little bit, wet your brush, dab it off a little bit. Just soften that edge. I'm going to get a little bit of cerulean blue, little tiny bit of cerulean blue, and I'm going to push that up there too. Wet brush, just soften it in. Don't come to the tape. You're kind of leaving a, a vin, what's called a vignette edge where you just have a, 
edge to your paint. Now I'm going to come down the horse's tail with this cerulean blue, going switching back and forth between cerulean and grey, pushing my brush in to get that lovely feathery look of the tail. And again, wet brush and just bring that out. It doesn't matter this time. You know, I'm always warning you against runbacks with the water. It doesn't really matter. This is really supposed to look like some really wet in wet um, creative watercolor. So it doesn't matter if you get a few, few blooms and runbacks. What I've got here is I've got a, a very soft dry brush and I could just pull some of that paint back into the tail a little bit with that soft dry brush and then just i'm just going to put a little bit of water in there so that i have i have some water making some softness in the tail and i also have some dry areas this is a little bit i feel this is a little bit um hard up here so i'm just putting a bit of water there i'm going to get a run back and that's fine Going into my uh, grey that's got the burnt sienna in it. Very watery. And I'm going to come down this back leg. You can work really slowly when you're working on dry paper. You don't have to, you don't have to be worrying about the paper. A little bit of blue. I'm not going to worry about the shadows at this point. They're all going to come last. You can have some hard dry edges. That's fine. You can drop in. I'm dropping in a little bit of the violety color. Just dropping it into the wet there. What you're aiming for is a lovely kind of mottled background that's extremely light going up under the horse's belly with the cerulean blue. And I'm going to drop just a tiniest bit of violet into that, just by that leg. That leg here is uh, very light white. So anytime you have a light white, it's nice to have a little bit of dark against it. Um, same over here with this back leg it has a lot of light white. So I'm just going to just drop in a tiny bit of that violety gray and just let it, let it blend into the wet that I have on here. And you can see, you can, you can just work slowly at the bottom here. I have some hard edges and I like that. I'm just going to leave these. I'm not going to wash them in with some water. Leave some hard edges, but you need to make them kind of attractive hard edges. So you don't want to have a, a hard edge that's got a sort of a nasty shape to it or too even. Then, of course, I've got to go up the other side. And so I don't smudge all this with my arm. I like to turn it so that I don't. I don't smudge. This side of the horse is going to be that brownie color. So the cerulean blue is the complement of that brownie color. So I would like to have some cerulean blue down this side. There's a little bit of mane showing, so I'm going to. And we can, right at the end, we can use the Dr. P.H. Martin's white, which I did, just to pull out a few strokes of the mane to get a really lovely look to the main a little bit of the other gray and again i have an edge here so i don't want to have that kind of edge i'm just using my damp brush to just agitate that edge so that i don't have a weird shape there or an unpleasant shape Something that doesn't really look nice. 
and these legs are white at the bottom so again i'm going to tap in a little bit of that violety gray that was had the rose in it because that will show up nicely against the white and i just have a little tiny bit of horse now i've got the ears up here and again they're brown so the cerulean is lovely let's put a little bit of cerulean in there now this is going to dry really pale and I, we we can put more color in the background when this is dry but we don't want to put too much at the very start and that's the start of this one now i'm going to do both horses so while you're just whichever horse you've done head or moving horse you can be doing that and i'm going to do exactly the same thing with the horse's head same colors in the background and these are not the colors from the reference photo the reference photo i thought was all too much brown in the background and i don't think the horse stands out as well against the same colors in the background it does on a photograph because the photograph has that ability to blur the background and make the horse in sharp focus but that's extremely difficult to do in paint so this is a much easier way to, for us to put in a background just mixing up a little bit more cerulean blue a little bit more gray with the burnt sienna and a little bit more of the cobalt and raw sienna and rose to make that kind of pinky violety warm gray my rose is so strong it always comes out too strong the first go go back a little bit more a bit more blue in there a bit more water wash my brush start with the cerulean and start up near this ear now the thing is when you are putting your first paint strokes on don't go too far before you come back with a wet brush and smooth that out to a uneven edge because if you wait too long it will be dry by the time you come back and try and smooth it out this horse um at the front of this horse there's a black mane so we can go quite light here where we're going to have the black mane coming in so we have a high contrast there and don't worry about any of these colors mixing wet and wet don't worry about any back runs that you have what we're trying to do is make this really look like a watercolor with the background very very painterly and watery and not precise at all i'm adding a slightly more a little bit more burnt sienna to my gray mix from time to time but this the horse does have a chestnut colored face so we want some blue to complement that there's a little you can see the white patch here of its body so i'm going to go darker against the white so that that shows up and i don't want to go too far look i've got lots of hard edges here and if i wait too long those hard edges are going to be there forever so i've got my wet brush softening those off a little bit of the cerulean again soften off that edge with a wet brush there's less background on um, if you don't like doing the background the head of the horse is good because there's less of it but um the, I will tell you right now, the head of the horse is quite tricky to paint. I'm going to turn this around. And I think that's just because I have never painted a horse before. And 
I, I wasn't quite sure where I was going with the whole thing. I've ridden horses, but it's many, many years since I've ridden horses. So. And it's really tricky right here. I have to remember where the back of the horse is. That's right. I've got to really, really I've got to turn it around and have a good look. I think it's, yeah, I see what I've got here. Okay, so the back of the horse is here. There was a little bit of mane sticking out. That's what was confusing me here. It's a mane. And so I'm poking my brush up and I can put a lot of that in with the PH Martins white. And of course, a lot of them, um, some of the mane is black. So it's put that in. Water, we don't want it to be too hard edged. Got to get that in. And even this mane can be softened out with a very, very dry, damp brush, so it's much softer. I'm going to get my little teeny, teeny brush and just, just poke in a little bit of shadow in here. And turn it back up the right way. Now I like to have my palette so you can see what I'm doing, but I needed to rest. I needed to rest my elbow to get that on there um, properly because if I've got my elbow up in the air, I can't paint. So that was a little bit tricky. And that's the background on the two. I will go back and forth between the two paintings. So if you want to do either one or you want to try one later. It depends how you feel about horses. Some people are mad about horses. They absolutely love them. And other people can take them or leave them. They're not that fussed about whether we paint a horse or not. But I've over the years had a lot of requests and I've always avoided them because I don't really know how to paint a horse. But it's such a beautiful photo. I figured I had to have a go. Right, so what I need to do now is I need to dry the background a little bit because I'm going to go back to this one and work on the neck and the body and also the neck and the body on this one. And I don't want any of that neck or body bleeding out into the background. It doesn't matter if the background bleeds into the horse. That's OK, because it's going to just form a lovely shadow underpainting. But I do not want, um, oh, you know what? I've missed a tiny bit on this. I just realized it's an easy thing to do. Right between these two front legs is background space. So I've got to put that in before I, I've got to look at the back leg too. See if the, I don't think there's any, I think that's body there. A little bit of background right between those. Just check here. So yeah, just just here. The back leg comes through there. The back legs are at a very odd angle, but that's where it is. Oh, can't argue with the photograph. So I will. What I'll do is I will mute my microphone so you're not blasted by the hairdryer, and I'll make sure that those backgrounds are dry. And I'm sure you're still probably working on your backgrounds. Keep them nice and light. Don't make them too dark. Remember, we can put two more layers on if there's areas that need dark or need darkening up. And don't worry if you get backgrounds, that's part of watercolor. There, I think my background's nice and dry. Like I said, I'll work on them simultaneously and we're working almost entirely on dry paper so that's that helps you control everything and it won't get too wet but we will be working wet and wet so the next section we're going to do is uh, the neck of this horse here 
or the neck of this horse here. And the reason we're starting with the neck, it's the least um, detailed place on the horse. It's a, a fairly large area, but we can work wet in wet. And we're not worrying about the face at this point or even what we want when we get to the body here, we really want to work on keeping this part of the body like really light uh, raw sienna or some quinacridone gold and then wet in wet getting this burnt sienna on the underbelly so these are two big areas that we want to work wet in wet but they're not detailed like the face or anything like that so it gives us a good start we need to have our colors ready so i mean it's the same horse so same colors you definitely want some raw sienna or um, if you don't have raw sienna, you can use, I just had to get some yellow ochre from the iron oxide is open again. I had to get yellow ochre yesterday. I don't think they had Daniel Smith raw sienna, but she thought this was raw sienna, but it's yellow ochre, but it's a lovely golden earth color. And I do like the Windsor and Newton, I think it's the Windsor and Newton one because they use a yellow rather than the brown, they use a yellow pigment, keeps it a nice, much clearer color. So that's the Windsor and Newton yellow ochre. And this is the M. Graham raw sienna, very similar. I got those ready. And then I want to get my burnt sienna ready because I want to work or we're going to work wet in wet. So I've already got a little bit of burnt sienna here. Let's put a bit more on here. Let's have some just burnt sienna. This horse is a gorgeous orangey brown color. So let's use that just as it comes. Again, this is a Windsor and Newton uh, burnt sienna because they use pigment red 101, whereas many of the others use pigment brown seven and it makes them more brown and I don't like it. Um, for instance, this is the Daniel Smith one that used the, uses the brown seven. And it's just not as, you can see it's just not as vibrant and orangey red. So I would also like to mix some um, burnt sienna with raw sienna. So I've got something in between the two. I want all these horse colors ready to go. So that's a mixture, mid-tones, the burnt sienna and the raw sienna. And I want a little quinacridone gold, maybe for the highlights that are really gold. But remember, this stains, it's quite strong. So if you use it, just be a little careful. And if you don't have a very red burnt sienna, and you want some really gorgeous red tones to this sort of chestnutty back of the horse, add a little red. So this is just the burnt sienna. And I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium red to it. And this is Pyrrole red that's bright too. And that's going to give it a lovely reddish tone. If I want a really, really warm tone on the back of the horse, so I've got a, quite a few colors there. We, have, we will need a dark brown later, but we're going to start with the, the light colors. And let's get the little running horse in first, my number eight brush. And like I said, we're going to start with the neck and let's look at it's really good to get to map it out in your mind first, get your mind very clear that here is really light. I'm going to zoom in for both the painting and this. This area here is really light and the, the leg here is really light. And then we have all of these mid tones. And then later when they're dry, we will come in and we'll put all of these dark tones for the muscles, big muscles of the neck and under here in this darker area. So we're not going to put all that dark on to start. We're going to put the light and the mid tones on first. And then we're going to move on to the belly here. Look, the belly is almost white back here. Really, really light. We're going to use lots of water coming towards. I might use a bit of my Conactone gold coming towards this. This looks like just 
burnt sienna all by itself here. So we're going to let those colors blend wet in wet and see how we go. So get my little wok brush to use. I'm a little conflicted. I'm going to try my number six brush. Oh, I want control, but I also don't want to get too finicky at this point. So I'm going in first of all with my, um, I'm going to go in with that new yellow, Winsor & Newton yellow ochre that I just bought. I'm going to see how that turns out. So I haven't used it for years. And I just bought it on Tuesday. And I'm going to see how that goes. So I want to do that the light and the dark all at once and um, there's a patch of white right on the edge of the horse i've got to avoid painting that accidentally and the top of the leg is brown i'm putting in all of the under color first on dry paper and I need to look at need to look carefully where is the where does the brown and the leg and everything start and finish comes down here and across here now the reason to work in small bits too is because if we work uh, wet and wet you don't want this drying up while um, you're painting the rest of the horse you want to be able to get your darker color on your mid color on while this is still wet so i'm going to the burnt sienna and i'm going to start under the the neck here and i want to put the burnt sienna wet and wet over the what I've, I've actually got yellow ochre this time doesn't matter raw sienna yellow ochre whatever you got that makes that lovely light golden color i would put that on and we just let it blend down into the lighter color by itself it's dark against this edge so we put the darker paint on this edge let it blend down now this is going to dry much lighter and then we're going to have darker on top of this so we can put dark in quite a few of these places and then there and be careful not to mix each mix too watery because if you've got a wet mix already on the page your next mix doesn't have to be as wet otherwise you're going to get too much too much water on your on your paper so what we want to leave is i want to leave this chunk here nice and light And even though it's quite light under here, we're going to model that with the dark when we come back in with the dark. And it's very dark across here. Again, that will be modeled later with the dark. And we can do a little bit of thirsty brush work too. So thirsty brush I'm gonna work on now. I'm drying my brush grabbing my paper towel and I'm just going to suck a little bit of the paint up with my thirsty brush and just make sure that I keep that paint from going in the highlight don't want it to to go in the nice light area take a little bit of this back just a little bit To get nice soft edges to your shadows, it's easier to suck up the, the paint when it's wet like this and model it with your damp brush rather than to try. If you try and paint all these areas carefully, you'll get lots and lots of hard edges. And you want this, so this 
horse's skin or um, coat, you call it, don't you? You want it to look soft and silky. So that means lots of soft edges. I don't want to go too light with my pulling up color because I'm going to go really dark with my next layer. So it's surprising how light this will look once I get the dark in. Let's get a little bit of that up. And then just let that all settle in. You'll notice that the burnt sienna, because it's a granulating color, is granulating quite a bit. Now I want to do the same thing to the body. Oh, the, the back of the horse here, very, very light. So I'm using the really, really light yellow ochre. I want to use a little bit of my quinacridone gold because it's quite a golden golden color this horse and quinacridone gold is such a gorgeous gorgeous color let's go into the quinacridone gold for this part of the the belly and down under the leg and the, i'll come back with the darker color on the leg of course but right now i want to get the light underneath you wonder how horses can run so well on these tiny sticky little legs they seem so delicate when they get down to their ankles and below the knee Right, well, before that dries, I don't want it to dry. I want to get in some just nice burnt sienna here. I'm not going all to the edge, edge with the gold. I want to get just burnt sienna down here. There's a, a white stripe. So I'm putting in the burnt sienna. Dipping my brush every few brush strokes because I want color on here, not a dry brush look. I want to get color on this horse. Now I've got work to do in a minute with my thirsty brush, but first let's get the color on. And right beside the very, very white tail, I want to get some color so that it makes the white really, really stand out. Now, my thirsty brush is gonna just help me soften this color in so that it has a lovely soft edge where it blends together. Just a little bit of help I'm going to go a little bit darker up next to the white. A little bit more burnt sienna up here. Because you need to make white stand out, you need the dark right next to it to make it stand out. And I put it on and just suck a little bit up so that we just get a soft transition, but we get the dark right against the, the light. And the lightest place is here. So if I need to, if there's any need, I can also, it's still wet, and pull a little bit of that light back. I'm going in around, the, the belly comes around like this. So I'm bringing my brush around in that motion to just make sure that I have that round light to it. This one is starting to dry now. And a, it's a little bit um, darker on this side, but we'll put all that in later. 
So that's going to just settle a little bit. I might, um, the face, like on both of them, a face needs a lot of care and modeling. So I'm kind of reluctant to go to it just yet. I think what I might do is let you work on that and I'm going to do the body of the other horse while you get your paint on. Just taking a little bit here. It's very mottled on the photo, so I'm just mottling that just a little bit. So I'm going to go to the this one. Same thing, I'm going to work on the neck first. Um, all of this area has, has got very dark shadow and of course we're going to put that in after we've got all the light in. The back of the horse I really only painted um, once. I got that lovely reddy brown uh, color and I could do that first because it's a it's a sort of a easy place to start. I'm going to start with that brown that I mix with the cadmium red. And I'm going to start with the easiest, smallest piece that we've got here. It's right here. You don't even have to think painting horse with a lot of these shapes. You're painting a shape and leaving the white. That's all you're doing. It's just a shape. I also want to make sure that my paint doesn't back run. And just remember to use the point of your brush to get to the point, the pointed edges of the shapes. Lift your brush up and get a lovely lovely point dip in the paint often you can't paint with a dry brush unless you need to there so what I've done on the back there is pretty much how it's going to stay I'm not going to do much else to the back of the horse. I got the color on. We'll just let it sit and, and um, soak in. And you can see how rich a little bit of the cadmium red with the burnt sienna makes it look. Now I'm going to a much bigger area. So I'm going to go back to my number eight brush. And I'm going into my, I have a mix, I've got a mix of burnt sienna and raw sienna because the neck is not as light as the back and it's a really big area so I'm going to number eight brush so I I can get the color on quicker and not much fuss just be careful along the edge of the face Another reason to use the big brush is to get this on before you get, you don't want dry edges. You don't want um, the paint to dry before you finish painting it. Want to get it on there. I'm dipping my brush every few brush strokes so that it's full of nice, juicy paint. Back into my paint. Little areas like this, this way, slow down and take your time coming up into this little tiny sliver that comes up the side of the nostril. And get that. That was the raw sienna with the burnt sienna. I'm 
And while that is still wet, I'm going to get some of the some of the burnt sienna that I mix with the cadmium red. And I'm going to drop, I'm literally dropping it in. I'm not really painting it in, dropping that in next to the head of the horse. And then I want to check my photo. I want to see where, where are the lights on the photo? So it's quite light here and fairly light here and it's a bit light here and then coming around here is the beginning of the leg muscle top of the leg muscle so i can go to my just burnt sienna on its own and around here down here it's going to be darker where we're going to put the leg muscle in here Again, I'm just literally dropping it in. I'm not painting with my brush. If you paint with your brush, you will take all of the paint off. You'll get, um, you'll get brush strokes where you take all the paint off. And this is not as dark as, as you will go. You will go much darker than this when we put the, the shadow layer on. So that's enough paint. That's enough paint on that horse to start with. And again, I don't want to do the face. I especially can't do the face next to that wet paint. And the face takes a lot of concentration. There's several muscles and shadows and different things. What surprised me when I painted the cow and the horse was I'd never really paid attention to the fact that the eyes of the cow and the eyes of the horse are really quite small compared to the large body that they have. And the horse, I suppose because it has to breathe in a lot of oxygen as it runs, its nostrils are much bigger than its eyes. The size of its nostrils are huge compared to, especially if you look at this one where it's running and it has its nostrils wide open to take in oxygen its eyes are absolutely teeny compared to its nostrils and i think because we're used to humans having eyes at the front of their head and being uh, the thing we look at we tend to make eyes on animals much too big and they don't they're not big at all and that that was something i really observed when i was painting this horse and this and the cow that we painted it's how tiny the eyes are and of course on the horse, how big, how massive the chest muscles and neck muscles are. Really, really massive. So I always find that painting teaches me a lot about observing things that I don't pay much attention to most of the time. Now this one's very, very wet. So um, I'm gonna flip back to this one, which is drying off nicely. And I don't really need, if I'm going to work on the face now, I don't really need to dry much of this. It's quite dry up by the neck. Certainly don't need a very big brush. Four or six is good. And the time has come. I've got to actually think about the face. So what are we, we thinking? We are thinking where's the light, where's the mid-tone, where's the dark? That's all you want to concern yourself with. If you get the lights and mid-tones and darks right, it will look right. So the lights are down the sides of the nose. Uh, it's a little bit light here on the um, sort of cheek where it goes down to the neck. And of course we have to leave the blaze down the front white. We've got to leave that white for now. We will be putting a little bit of pink on the nostrils. And I did this part here. I did it with chalk pencil at the end of the painting just to get, especially on this one, just to get that soft, fuzzy look on the nose. So same sort of procedure. She says, trying to remember how she did it. I'm going to get some of my raw sienna and 
I've got to remember to leave that diamond white. So put that in my mind first, paint around the, the diamond here. And there's a little bit of a white stripe down the, down the front of the head. So I've got to remember that, that the mane is black at the front, so we don't have to worry about that. We can just paint over it for now. And there's that little tiny sort of diamond shape between the nostrils. Everything else is going to be dark brown here and inside the nostrils is going to be very, very dark. I tell you what there is on the back of the horse that, again, I didn't even observe just now because I was busy with the other parts. Go to my uh, ready brown on the back of the horse here. There's a brown shape here. So I better put that on before I forget it completely. Get some burnt sienna on my little brush, my number two brush now, because I'm going to some quite small spot spaces here. And I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna on the side of the chin, not chin, cheek. Not much water on my brush. I don't want it to be too runny. And up here, next next to that white diamond, we can have a bit darker. And then we're going to wait and do a lot of the dark modeling when this is dry. There'll be some dark modeling around the face features. Do the ears. And then just put the can put the burnt sienna on and we can darken the ears with dark brown afterwards. They kind of curl back these ears, kind of a very sweet shape. Yeah, it's a little bit of color on the face. I'm just going to lift a tiny bit of the color coming down each side of the nose, just to make sure I have those highlights. And that's good. You can see this, it's just like I said, it's, it's just like painting a piece of wood. You're painting the lights, the darks, the shadows. You don't have to worry about exactly what you are painting. Just get the lights and darks and shadows correct. One thing I could do while I'm painting this horse in the dry areas, the hooves are a very raw sienna -y color. So this one here is, is a very raw sienna. The back one's more dark, and this one's kind of a mid-tone raw sienna. So I have raw sienna here on my brush. So let's paint the, the front hoof with the lightest raw sienna. The one beside it is very dark, so I don't want to paint that now because the, the dark from the very dark one will run into the very light one. I'm going to suck a little bit of that paint up and then they'll both be dark. So I'll paint this light one first. The back one is sort of a mid um, raw sienna color. So I'm going to use my mix that's raw sienna and burnt sienna and I will paint that this one 
with my mix of burnt sienna and raw sienna. Now the one at the back is um, a darker color. So the way to make something darker is to add blue. So here's my raw sienna and here's my cobalt blue. If I add a little bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of burnt sienna, a bit of cobalt blue, I can make that a darker kind of raw sienna color. Not too much darker. Uh, this one back here definitely needs to be in shadow. Let me put that one in. Now, the one over here, like I said, will, will need that dark as well. But we'll wait to do that. I'm going to lift a little bit of that on that side where it's a little bit lighter. And on this one, on this side, take a little bit of that dark and add a little bit of dark on the that side of that one. And pull a little bit of light on the other side, just, just to give them that round shape that they have. And we've got those in. And the tail has hardly any shadow in it. But it's kind of nice to add a little bit of extremely diluted yellow ochre or raw sienna at the bottom of the tail. If you look at um, the one that I did here, I've put some of that very diluted raw sienna at the end of the tail, just so it's not, it's not just white. So I'm going to take my, um, I'm actually going to use the yellow ochre that I bought because it's very lovely. It's making a clean spot to get a bit more clean yellow ochre there. Lots of water because I want it really, really light. Number eight brush because I don't want to fuss. And I'm just going to pull my brush up this way into the tail of the horse to give some very, very light shading to that white. Clean, wet brush now and just get that in there with a slightly damp brush and the top is still going to just be completely white. This uh, back leg is in shadow and I'm going to use the raw sienna and the burnt sienna with a lot of water to put this back leg in shadow. I will put a bit more shadow on it after this is dry too. Let's get that in first. A lot of water mixed with this to keep it beautiful and light. And same for this back leg here. I'm going to add, I'm going to add a little bit of um, cobalt blue to that mix because things in the background are slightly blue. So this one has a little bit of cobalt blue mixed with the raw sienna and burnt sienna and a lot of water. And we're going to push that leg back behind the front legs by doing that. We're going to put a bit more shadow on it later as well. Like I said, this is your first layer. And I'm looking at the this picture. You can see what I mean. Like this, this leg is that uh, raw sienna, burnt sienna color. This one, same with a little blue. And this one, again, the raw sienna, burnt sienna diluted color. So let's get that nice and diluted and let's put the, this leg in shadow too. Now what's going to help is you're going to put some very dark shading on the brown of the horse, which will make this leg look much lighter when you do that. Let's get that 
shaded. And then the front leg has almost all white on it. It's just going to have a little muscle. It's going to have a little knobbly knee, little knobbly ankle. And the rest of it's going to stay white. A little bit of muscle here. And a few more details we'll put on, but when this layer is dry. The only other thing I did was you can leave the white on the back completely white if you like. It looks in the photo, it looks completely bright white in the photo. So it's kind of nice to leave it really bright white, but I, I'm a fan of just putting a slight blue tinge to white sometimes. So I've got the cerulean. Here's my cerulean here. And I've added a lot of water to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a light stain, literally stain of that cerulean just on part of the back of the horse. And same with just with the tail where it's just coming out from the horse here. Just it's it's literally a stain. You can hardly see it. I just think it gives it a tiny bit more um, realism and ties it into your cerulean background as well. Now at the moment, this horse looks like it's running on air. And we can't have that. It's it's a bit disconcerting to the viewer. We've got a couple of things to put in. We've got a little bit of ground to put in and then um, some nice shadow. So this ground is uh, raw sienna and burnt sienna, very watery. And of course that has to be dry before we can put in the shadow. And we can't do the dark hoof and the ground at the same time because the dark hoof would run all into the ground. So that, a lot of those dark details have to be done last when it's very, very dry. But we could at this stage, if I mean, you may not be there, you may be still trying to catch up, but put in some very loosely painted raw sienna and burnt sienna ground. And what I'm trying to emulate is uh, this horse is in a sort of a, I don't know, a paddock of sandy sort of some, something on the ground. I'm sort of trying to emulate that kind of a look and stick with the colors that we're using. I, I want a big brush, my number 10 brush, because I don't want to fiddle with this. I just want it to be big wish, wish wash, splish blush done. So I'm going to get some raw sienna or yellow ochre if you have it. That's absolutely acceptable. They're very close and because of the different pigments manufacturers use, you never know which one's going to do what. So I want a little bit of um, I'm sort of following where the edge of the paddock is that the horse is running in, which is about here on the horse. So you can see my, my brush strokes are really, really big and loose. They're not, they're not fussy. Get that's the raw sienna. I'm gonna get a little bit of burnt sienna, very watered down, and again, pretty loosey goosey. Just this is just so that the horse isn't running in the air. We're grounding it. A little bit of burnt sienna and Swish, swish. If I do too much, I'm going to completely ruin the whole loose look of the background. So just a wet brush now just to get that in and leave it alone. Don't, don't fuss with it. Just make sure there's a little bit of ground in there and then leave it. At any time, if we need any dark, more dark, we can also go over this um, background if we feel we need any more dark. I I um I did on mine put some here 
to get it a little darker and I think I put it a little darker under the tail that's up to you we don't need to fuss about that right now we are we'll work on shading getting the shadows in the horse body and the horse face so that will be the next stage I'm going to mix my favorite my favorite shading mix which is of course burnt sienna and ultramarine blue it's like well i just think it's one of those mixes you just can't really go wrong with and since we're using burnt sienna for most of this horse we have to continue with it a little bit of ultramarine blue with the burnt sienna to make a dark brown of course there's no reason that you can't use burnt umber or a different brown I just like to stick with the same few colors that I'm using it makes it very easy makes it all come together well as a painting so I've mixed a lovely dark brown with the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue I'm mixing up a little bit more burnt sienna on its own so that I can use it if I need to um, lighten that up a little bit at any point and then I've got to look at this and I'm starting right back from the beginning where I started right under the face here head there's a long triangle of very dark shadow so let's start there I'm going to go to that dark brown I just mixed up with the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna and I'm going to come around the edge of the, the head here and down in that it comes right to the edge of the, the shadow comes right to the edge of the lip and it comes down in a kind of a triangle shape now I'm going to get my clean wet brush and then go up to my number four brush that too is too small for blending and just going to blend that that shadow down I'm going into just the plain plain burnt sienna and I'm going to come down here with just the plain burnt sienna and let that blend into that shadow it's got to stay light over here so again with that that stamp brush just slightly soften that in and make that light smaller brush again and going back to the dark brown mix adding a little bit more burnt sienna to it and I'm going to come down the side of the neck here it's a little bit too dark so I'm going to add a little bit more water and a little bit more burnt sienna and come down this side of the neck And I'm just wetting my brush, softening that shadow off. My wet brush, just so it's not too hard an edge. Going into the dark, dark brown, because this side of the leg is really dark. comes down I'm going to add a little bit more blue because it comes down to almost almost a black or very very dark brown just here where it hits the white 
clean brush, wet brush. Again, I am going to soften that in so I don't have a hard edge to that. Slowly now we're working up the, the shadows, the darks. In here there is a very dark shadow. Let me bring that around. Again, we don't want it too hard, so with my wet brush, I'm going to soften some areas of it. But we can't lose it, so I've got to be very, very, very careful how I soften it. And it's actually, it actually gets a little darker under here, so I can put a little, a little bit of dark paint under there and that side of the leg. And I'm going to use my wet brush again just to gently ease that in so that it's not a little bit of burnt sienna. Don't want it to be too harsh a transition between the line and the muscle and the, the leg. This is, this is quite a tricky part to do. So go slowly, go really slowly. So this, this side of the, the leg muscle is quite a hard, quite a hard shadow. And this shadow across here is pretty hard as well. Don't really need a soft edge on there that comes across. But as it comes up the other side, it does need to be softer. It comes up here and under the neck. And up here. So again, wet brush. I can't leave it at that hard edge. I've got to use my wet brush. And I'm going circle, circle, circle with my wet, damp brush, not really wet. And I'm just softening that in. And the more you put the darks on, the more you'll see you need more dark eventually. But we're just getting started with the dark. come out a little bit more there. We've done this hard shadow across here. Now there's a softer shadow. I'm just going to do burnt sienna for the softer shadow. Comes down the side here. Not as hard as that one. So we'll put a little bit of burnt sienna on damp brush. And just oh, too wet a brush, got to get a little bit of that off. And just ease that in a little bit. So we can slowly get these darks in. There's a little bit of dark, a bit of dark brown just here. And I'm going to put a bit more on these ankles and a little bit of dark shadow on that, that hoof and a little bit more shadow on this hoof where it comes behind that other leg. Soften it off with my brush. A little bit more dark shadow on this hoof too, on this side. Soften that off with my brush a little bit. 
I've got a shadow on the leg here. And down that side of the, just gently down that side of the leg. A little bit. I'm going back to my cerulean blue. I'm going to bring a bit more shadow down this side of this leg too. Anywhere else is the shadow? Well, let's look at this back leg here. Shaded under here and then very dark here. So I'm going into the burnt sienna, just kind of burnt sienna. With It's got just a tiny touch of the dark mix with it. And I want a nice hard line there where the belly comes around. And... I'm going to soften that shadow off in just a minute. I'm going to get that down here and down here. And when I've got that all on, damp brush and soften that in. And softening that with my damp brush just ever so gently and up here ever so gently just a little bit darker just around on the tail and here Just using my damp brush to just model that in. Now, just where it comes here around the knee, pretty dark. So this is this is the burnt sienna with more ultramarine blue in it, and we need to get some very knobbly, knobbly knees, dark knees here. Well, I have that dark color on my brush and this is still wet here. I want to add a little bit more dark up here. And it helps me because this paint's wet so it will, it will immediately soften out when I put it on there. So we're getting a little bit of musculature and light and dark happening. And this is how we're going to do the face too, but the face is just a bit more detailed, a little bit more complicated. I will need a bit more modeling on the neck. It's a little bit too damp to do that at the moment. This has dried enough down here that I can put the, the hoof in that is dark right here. I'm using the burnt sienna and blue mix just to put that darker hoof there. And I can suck a little bit of that dark up with my brush so it's not too, too dark and it will settle in. There is a barely visible white part to the horse here that in the photo is like a dark blue because it's in shadow. That's not going to really work for us. It could do. But I think it's nicer to have dark shadow behind that white to make it look more white. And this is a point where I can, I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to take some cerulean blue with a little bit of cobalt in it. 
little bit of burnt sienna in it just gray it down a little bit and i'm going to put a little bit of extra shadow oops that's too much paint way too much paint wet brush and take some of that off and put a little bit more shadow beside that white so it shows up more again wet brush to ease that color in and i prefer that to making that edge a dark gray i just think for what we're doing it it just has more impact also under the tail here i want a lot more shade under there so i'm getting the when i mixed with I've got the cobalt blue, the raw sienna, and the rose. I mixed a kind of purpley gray, and I want to get more of that under the tail here. It looks dark when I put it on, but I'm going to wash it all in with some water. So that I have a little bit more impact right under the tail. I have to be careful not to hit the leg that I've just painted, so I don't want to get water on that. But I do want that white tail to stand out a little bit more. Now you can see that I put I put dark paint on, but then I blended it out with my wet brush, and it's just going to give me a little bit more shadow near the tail. A tiny brush now. I'm going to do do a few of those shadows actually up in the tail like that so that i have i have the sort of feeling that the you know the hair is is flowing from the tail um i want to put a little bit more a little bit more shadow on this side of the leg too i'm just using that same sort of violet gray shadow and put it on, wet brush, blend it in. And then we're kind of ready to work on the shadows on the face. So we're using same colors, the burnt sienna, the burnt sienna with the blue. We've already put the, the raw sienna on there for the highlights. I think it's, it's um, I'm wondering whether to start with the, the nice dark nostrils. But sometimes it helps to get the dark in there so that you can judge the rest. I'm giving that a little think. Hmm. Might I might do the side here first. Then back to the burnt sienna. And just putting the side of the base in first while I have a little think about whether to do the nostrils yet. Thing is, once part's wet, you have to wait. I'm going to lift a little bit of that um, darker paint from there because it's a little bit lighter under the chin. And I think I'll work, I'll work on a bit of the face before we go to the nostrils. So we don't want a dark, dark burnt sienna and blue mix. I'm I'm modifying it, and I've got. I got a little pile here, dark, dark here, medium, and then I'm adding a little bit of burnt sienna on this side. So I've got a variety of 
burnt siennas and blues that I can use. And we'll start up. We'll start up here and put the dark over the eye. And just just gently, I've, all I've done is wipe my little brush on the sponge. I'm just going to gently ease the edge of that dark a little bit with my brush. Now, the ears have got very dark, so I'm going into the one that's got much more blue mixed with it to do the backs of the ears, which are pretty dark. This is just a number two brush. You need a small brush and lots of control. I do both, do both ears. Get this kind of dark on the edge. And of course, we're going to have a lot of mane in there too, so we don't worry about that for the moment. Kind of nice to put the dark mane in last. It's one of your dark, darkest colors, and it goes over the top of everything else. So you don't need to worry about it at the moment. You can cover a lot of sins in the end. I've got the dark ears on. They look a lot darker when I look on the camera than when I'm actually looking at them in real life. But I can take a and take a little bit off. But I look at my original painting, they're pretty dark in the original one. Now the side of the face is definitely not as dark as the ears. So going to a more just um, very lightly toned burnt sienna for the side of the face. Again, I've got to dry off my brush a little bit and do a little bit of help with that. As it dries, I feel that some places still need to be darkened up a little bit. Over this eyebrow over here. A bit darker. And of course, you need your, your slightly damp brush to really sculpt some of this shading into place underneath the eye. It's pretty dark. But there is a big light patch right where I haven't painted, so I've got to be very careful not to not to paint that big light patch. Otherwise I'm gonna lose the shape of the face. I want a little bit more burnt sienna for this side. 
this is really fiddly. You can see how fiddly this kind of shaping is on the face. Even more so on the big face. A little bit of this has to be slightly feathered in. And it's so hard to get the light part coming over the nose that I just have to do it later with some PH Martin's white. It's just too hard to get the white feathering over the nose. I'm lightening up the eyebrow a little bit. Now, I, I was debating whether to do the nostrils, and I think I'll leave them till I do the black mane. And instead, go to the dark ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix to do the, the nose here on either side of the that little pink shape that we made there. Oh, it's going to be hard. A little brush. Little pink shape. Let's put that in first. And then gently come down. <laughs> I can't even see where the edge of my my um mouth is now. That's it's quite quite dark, and just this side of the nostril is quite dark. I'm just adding in a little bit, a little bit of dark that side, and of course it's much darker under here too. We're going to need another layer under there to get darker. It's amazing, isn't it, how dark you actually have to go when you start putting the darks in. Even this needs to be a little bit darker. Looking at the neck and thinking under here still needs to be quite a bit darker. That brush is too big. Number, number eight should do it, I think. Again, damp brush, model that top in. Got to pull back a little bit of light on the neck. And then everything looks, once you get a bit, a little bit darker, and everything looks too light then. But it is, it is pretty shaded on that side of the neck.
and damp brush to model it in. Now we, we're, we're doing pretty well. We've got the mane and the eyes to get in and the shadow under the horse. A really important thing when putting the shadow under the horse to make sure that this leg is lifted off the ground back here, you've got to have a space here between the leg and the shadow. That makes it look like that leg is lifted up off the ground, which it is. And all of those things help with the movement of the horse. Now, I like for a shadow, I like pretty much just ultramarine blue on its own. If it's over another color, I might add the tiniest touch of burnt sienna into it just to make it, I've got it here, just to make it a little bit gray, just a tiny bit gray. And I have to pick my brush sizes carefully. It's, I don't want to overdo the, the shadow, but I don't want to do it too um, slowly either. Well, let's get let's get it in the right place and let's try and get it in one one go i think we could have a bit more paint a little bit more paint shadows of course are not they're transparent you it's the ground that's shaded it's not a big thick thing um, that you can't see through so you want it to be transparent paint. Go carefully around these hooves. And again, it comes out in kind of a, a weird shape. But that's how it that's how it goes in the photo. There's a, there's a sliver of light between the parts of the shadow. So I want to have that sliver of light in there. It comes quite narrow up to this rear hoof and then it trails out. I want it to be exactly right because if the shadow doesn't look exactly right, it just doesn't do anything for your picture. I'm going to use a little bit of water to fade that shadow out and make it a little bit fuzzy just here. And it's a real sharp shadow at the front of the horse. That is really gonna ground the horse. And if you have that space between the shadow and the back hoof, it will lift the back hoof up off of the ground. And that's what helps give it that running movement. So be really careful, really careful as you go around the hooves and under that hoof so that you don't touch that hoof and have it blended into the to the ground shadow. So really for this one, all we need now is the eyes and the nostrils, and then we're pretty much um, finished this one, get this one finished. We just need a nice dark brush, a dark color and a little tiny brush for the eyes. Um, if you have a Payne's Grey, that's an easy way to make a nice dark colour. I have a Payne's Grey and sepia, that will give a good dark colour. Or you can go with the Burnt Sierra and Ultramarine Blue, but I'm going to add a little bit of Ultramarine Blue to that. See, I've got, I've got the sepia, Payne's Grey, a bit of Ultramarine Blue. I've got almost a black, but hardly any water. That's what's going to keep it um, nice and dark. And the same thing, if I, if I did mix a burnt sienna and an ultramarine blue, but with very little water, blue and burnt sienna, but very little water, we can get it really dark as well. So either one, 
a tiny brush. I'm going with my number two brush. And I want to get the, you can barely see the eyes on this, on this one. Get those in. I've got to get the eyelids on too. But what I want to get in is the um, nostrils and the mane. So we've got to get the really big, big nostrils using the black that we just mixed up or a very, very, very dark color. Again, I'm quiet because I'm really concentrating on where I put the paint very carefully. Now the bottom of the nostril is light, so I've put the dark on, but then I'm going to suck up the light at the bottom of the nostril. And you can't see much light on the other one, but this one you can see a bit of light. And I will, I will put the eyebrows in when I've got the... Um, there's a little little bit of dark coming up the nose here. A bit of dark, a bit more dark on that side of the mouth. But let's get my liner brush and that nice dark colour. And let's do a bit of the the mane to really finish off this one. And I like my liner brush for this because I can just get those lovely feathery strokes of the mane. There's some coming out here. And there's some white coming out there too. But it's nice to have that, that black coming out the top. Get a little bit of the, I've got that brush in my hands, nice for doing the eyebrow. And just a little tiny little tiny strokes with my rigger, my liner brush. I'm going to do a little bit more than you can actually see on the photograph because I want it just a tiny bit more dramatic. Got this very nice thin brush. I'm just going to have a bit more coming out. It gives a little bit more movement to the horse. It's just a little bit more drama. Don't need to overdo it, but I'm going to get the edge of the mouth in there. And then there's just the top of the eyebrow is a light gray color. So I'm just all I'm doing with that dark color that I mix, I'm just watering it down a little bit. That's all. A little brush and putting in. The top of the 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 brow. There's a little bit darker down the side. Just modeling here. See even a bit more shadow down here. back a little bit and the, the last thing I like to do with this one I've got my pH Martins white I've got really really clean water and a clean brush 
and get some white. I've got some mixed up. I keep it just in this little little dish ready to wet up and go. My liner brush again. And I'm just going to pull a few, a few whiskers of white tail. Get my brush really well, well painted up. It's real, real light touch. And just gives you a few lovely, lovely light wisps of tail and you can do the same for the the mane just a few really really light wisps of white mane with that ph martin's white or white gouache and if uh, it's very hard to keep that that white on the nose and again you can use your white to get a little bit more of that um that white back if you lost a little bit of that this one the whites were the final sort of touches even on the um the black mane that's here has some has some highlights on it where it's shining and once the black is dry you can put those on too and this nostril has a bit of highlight so anyway there we go there's our horse. That one's finished. The other one needs a lot of work. So I know that was a little bit really challenging one. I don't think I'll be doing a horse again anytime soon. It's a <laughs> challenge for me too. But um, we, we had a go. And um, I hope we learned something along the way. So that was my first time painting a horse, apart from the one that I did before the class to check it out and test it. How did you do? Uh, I struggled a little bit, but it was fun. And uh, I'll make part two pretty soon so you can see how the horse's head turned out. Thanks for joining me and bye for now. Mm -hmm.